some of these new Chinese diesel heaters, like the one I recently purchased, come with this blue-faced, kind of an odd round-shaped controller, as opposed to the popular rectangular black type controllers. Now, I kind of like this controller only because it comes with this cool remote control that has a little screen on it that gives you some useful information right here on the controller. Other than that, the controller is pretty much the same as the black controller. It has all the settings, all the parameters, and everything in it just the same. But there seems to be confusion about how to set up the timers in this type of controller. This unit didn't come with any kind of instructions. I did get a manual with this all-in-one unit, but as far as the controller itself, there's no information whatsoever in the manual. So I rely on places like YouTube to get some information, and there's no correct, accurate information on how to set up the timers on this type of controller. So through trial and error, I have finally figured out how to set up the timers in this particular controller. So I'm not going to go through every setting on this controller and the advanced uh, menu. It's pretty much the same as the black controller. I'm going to concentrate on showing you how to set up the timers inside of uh, this controller. You can still scroll through here. That's the um, ambient temperatures, 29 degrees Celsius. Uh, the pulse rate's on 1.2 hertz currently. 13 volts on the battery that's currently hooked up to it. Uh, 322 meters above sea level, that's about right. And error codes, no errors at, the, at this time. And back scrolls back around to the time in 24 hour format. The two timers in here, just like on the black controller, there are two timers. But these timers have to be thought of as countdown or delay timers. Timer one, and I'll show you how to get to this, but timer one when it's turned on, it's basically wanting to know how much time do you want to wait before this unit turns on. So if I want this unit to turn on, let's say two hours from now, timer one, I would set for what looks like two o'clock, but it's actually two hours and zero minutes. And then I'm gonna go to timer two, and that's gonna determine how long it's gonna stay on once it starts up. So if I wanted it to run for an hour when it uh, starts up I would set timer 2 to what well, appears to be 1 o'clock but it's actually 1 hour and 0 minutes so to do that hit this little settings icon up here in the left hand corner now it's asking you if you want to change the, the time the clock I'm gonna leave that alone hit it again there we go we got a timer icon uh, there timer number one is currently turned off I'm gonna turn that on right here hit the OK button it's currently set on four hours so if I leave that where it's at now I can change it to whatever I want but I'm gonna leave it there so if I leave it there it's gonna wait four hours and then it's going to turn on and start running hit the OK button now it goes straight to timer 2 it's turned off I'm gonna turn it on hit the OK button it's set for one hour so when this turns on, it's going to run for one hour, and then it's going to stop. And the time when it stops, it's going that little timer icon is going to disappear. And if you want to use the timer function in this again, you're going to have to go in there and set it all over again. So if you wanted this to, uh, if you wanted to use the timer in this every day, then every day you're going to have to go in and reset it because once it goes through a cycle, the timer disappears, and it will be turned off automatically. So I hope that clears up how to set the timers inside of this particular style of controller. It's not a function everyone wants to use, but it's kind of nice to know how to use it in case you ever decide you do want to use it. So thank you for watching the video. I hope this helps, and I will catch you on the next one.